This video is brought to you by Timberbits. We help you create with wood. This is video 8 on how I went about producing this Krevnov style cabinet. It's based on the article in the Fine Woodworking Magazine, issue 208. I did some slight modifications to the featured cabinet in the issue, like replacing the glass doors with bird's eye hue and pine panels. So now the doors are complete, we now dry fit the doors onto the cabinet. After that, I then mark out where I want all the shelves to fit on the cabinet. With adjustable shelves, you can use these brass pins that go straight into the timber. But uh, because the cabinet's made out of hewn pine, it's actually quite soft. I didn't want to use the brass pins straight into the cabinet. Instead, you've got these brass ferrules that hold the pins in place and that's what we're using in this situation. So I drill a 8mm hole to hold the brass ferrules and the brass ferrules then hold the pins. Once the brass ferrules are glued into place I can then glue the cabinet together. Again I'm using tight bond free with five dowels on each side of the of the cabinet. I work by myself so I try to work as fast as I can this, cab, this top half of the cabinet is pretty much like a very big box. So I'll put the glues in place and the, and the dowels in place and then I clamp it all together. Again, I can't stress how easy these K-body clamps are to use, these Bessie K-body clamps. Compared to the old pop clamps that I used to use for a one-man operation, these K-body clamps make life a hell of a lot easier. After it's been glued in place, I then use a wet rag to wipe off all the uh, squeeze out of the glue. Once I wipe the excess off, I then reapply the clamp. I then check for squareness to make sure the cabinet's nice and square and then let it sit. Now that the cabinet has been glued up, I then use a spoke shave and a small plane to fine tune the doors so that there's an even gap throughout. So this is the cabinet with the doors in place. The first shelf's in place, the next two shelves are made out of glass so they're not in yet. Um, it's now time to make the door pulls. I can use a brass off the shelf door pull, pull but I prefer to make uh, a little burl door pull. I'll begin with a piece of Coolabar burl. First thing I do is flatten the base and get a nice even shape. I then trim the burl to 10, mil 10 millimeter slices. So this is the first one, and then I go through and cut the second one. So we've got two slices of roughly 10 millimeters. My door pulls are usually about 80 millimeters long. I now then trim it to 80 mils on the drop saw. As you can see, they pretty high so what I'll do now is trim them a little bit shorter. We start off with such a big piece of burl and we end up with two tiny little draw pulls, door pulls. I then sand the two ends so that I get a radius on both sides of the door pulls. And this is what the two door pulls look like. roughly 80 millimeters long, 10 millimeters in thickness and about 25 millimeters high. This is the dry fit. I, I found that it's just a bit too high for my liking so I'm going to make them a little bit flatter. So back to the band so we go. I'm just going to trim off another five or six mils. Slow and steady. And this is what they now look like. So I'm a lot happier with that and that's what we'll go with. Now 
next step is to put two holes on the back of the door pulls so that we can put the screw in. Now I could have glued the door pulls in place but I don't like gluing door pulls in place. I'd rather use a, a screw. That way we can take the handles off and turn them around when we're moving. Now this is how, once the holes are in place, I then transfer where the two holes are meant to go by these two little pins. They're actually two and a half mil welding rods cut to length and it's basically like using a, a, a dowel locator. So once I'm happy with where it's the door pull is going to go, I then press it in place and that'll leave two marks on the actual door. I, I then use a cordless drill to drill the two and a half mil holes where the screws will go. I countersink the other side. I, yeah, this is the countersink and then I use two screws to hold the door handle in place. Now this is a contentious issue. A lot of people don't like seeing screws in their cabinets but for me I would rather use screws in this situation because if you ever needed to move house and you needed to move the cabinets, well, it's ideal to take the handles off and reverse them so that the handles don't get knocked off during movement. I think it's a fair compromise. Uh, a lot of people would disagree, so if you don't like using screws, well, you can use the dowels with bamboo skewers to glue the two door handles in, in place. Doing the right side of the door is exactly the same as the left side use the pins to locate where the dowels are supposed to go or where the screws are supposed to grow and then just use the cordless drill to uh, screw the two screws into place. And it's as simple as that. Now this is the cabinet nearly finished, so I'm just putting the top of the cabinet onto the base carefully, hopefully I don't drop it this time. The last little bit of the project is to oil the cabinet. I use organoil Danish oil, I basically sand everything to 800 for this cabinet, that's starting off with 80 grit, 120, 180, 240, 360. 400 then 800 grit and then after I've done that I then use the organoil first coat this is the first coat where you see all the colors come through after the first coat uh, you use a clean rag just to wipe off all the excess and then 24 to 48 hours later you come back and put a second coat I don't like using polyurethane oil finishes the way that I I like to finish my cabinets and that's Danish oil there With this final step, this is the end of the series of the videos on how I went about producing this Krevinov style cabinet. Hopefully you've enjoyed the journey and have been inspired to create something out of wood. This cabinet will join my collection of handmade furniture pieces that I will hopefully pass on to my kids. And this is the final cabinet, a bird's eye hill wooden pine cabinet with Tasmanian black wood base. Remember, if you like this video, like us on Facebook. You can find us by searching Timberbits or hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Thank you.